Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Justin, if you're new to the channel, on here I discuss everything DIY solar. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing a review that's sponsored by this company right here. I don't know if you say that Lee Pauls or Li Pauls or something of that sort, but they are sponsoring this video by simply sending this battery out to me and asking me to do a full review on it and give my honest opinion on the battery. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And the first thing we wanna do is to get this thing unboxed. I'm telling you, some of the marketing on these batteries, they all kind of look the same. So let's get this pulled out of the plastic. Now the packaging's not the greatest on this battery. So if you're impressed by packaging, if any, if you will not be impressed by this because, let me show you, this is the packaging. This kind of sits on the sides and on the top so it doesn't have form-fitting uh, packaging this is one of the silliest things i've seen why would you ship this with the lugs in here most of those come in this pack and you have all four of these um, inside your packaging these actually have them installed which can be dangerous during shipping because the way that this company packages is they put this piece up on top and this is unprotected when we open the box if they would just remove these and add them in this little bag then they would be able to put a complete protection over top of that battery and why this is important for you is because if you receive a battery that's damaged because of poor packaging it's going to cause you a headache what if you're in a time crunch and you need that battery asap then you get it and it's damaged got to send it back wait for another one to be sent out to you I don't like this. This is an easy fix by the company and I hope that they're listening. And before I get started, I have taken a picture of this so you can see all of the specs, but I'm just gonna highlight what I think is important that you might wanna know. But I also wanna provide you with everything with this card that they provide so you can see it. I'll put it over here to the side. But something that's important, if you're storing this, it's called self-discharge. This can discharge at around 3% each month. So if you let it set for a long period of time, you're gonna to need to charge this back up to a certain state. The uh, recommended charge current is 40 amps. The maximum charge current is 200 amps. The recommended charge voltage is 14.6 volts. So you can use a 12 volt charger to charge this up. The BMS uh, cutoff is at 14.6 uh, volts. Now, this is a 200 amp uh, current continuous discharge. So that is pretty impressive because we're talking about a 200 amp hour battery that's putting out uh, 200 amps. So if you use 200 amps for an entire hour, that's all you're going to get out of this battery. But that's that's pretty significant because most of these 200 amp hour batteries only come with a 100 amp BMS in it. So we're going to test that and make sure that we're going to see if we can shut down that BMS by doing an overchar, I mean, overcurrent on it. And then we're going to see if the capacity is what it says it is. The capacity is supposed to be at 2,560 watt hours. So what we'll do, we'll pull all that 200 amp hours out and we'll try to charge it back up and see if we can get uh, somewhere around 200 to 205 amp hours back in. So that's kind of what we're going to cover today. I'm going to hook it to my little test station here on the side and we're going to hook some appliances to it and we're going to see if we can shut it down. This video is not one of those videos where I cut it open and go over everything on the inside. I might do that in a future video, but I think it's important to find out, does it actually work under a load? Uh, whether we're just doing a small test, I want to see if that BMS, if it says it'll shut off in five seconds, it's say 300 amps, then it should set off, shut off at, you know, five seconds with 300 amps uh, under a load. If it doesn't, then that fails. So, and if the capacity doesn't go up to 200 amp hours, you know, as the charge is back, it fails. I don't care if it's 199, it doesn't matter. If they're saying 200, it's gotta be 200. If they're saying that the BMS will shut down under certain circumstances, it needs to happen because that's what we're relying on is to make sure that we hold these companies accountable for what they're advertising these batteries to actually do. And before we get started, of course, I gotta have my coffee, but I'm gonna be using this 60 amp MPPT as my charge controller. Now that's connected to two panels outside. Each one of those panels are 400 watt Aptos solar panels. 
that feeds in, then this feeds into the battery and charges this up upwards of 60 amps. Uh, we're typically, I like charge around the 45 or 50. So I'll try to keep it right around what they say is recommended for this. We'll get the full charge on this and then we'll start our capacity test. And I have a sequence that I like to do. You need to turn on the battery first. We'll flip this breaker on and then we'll turn on the solar. Why do I choose to go in that order when starting up the system? That's because I read the manual to the charge controller. Depending on the parameters of the battery, I go into these settings and we just kind of go through it until we get right here. I want this to be less than 14.4. I like 14.2, 14.3. I'm going to leave it here. Press and hold, set that setting. And while this is charging up, I want to just talk about what came in the box with this. It's kind of odd that only these two items and the lug terminals came in with the package. It doesn't have any type of other documentation. Usually you get a pamphlet or something that you can read over the battery because why I want to talk about that is what does the plus stand for on this battery? My conclusion of what that stands for is because it has a 200 amp BMS inside of it. And that's the only uh, thing that I can come up with is why they named it a plus. This is their premium version of the 12 volt, 200 amp hour battery because they do have just a standard 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour uh, battery like this, but this one has a plus written on it. And that has to be because it has that 200 amp BMS built inside. But I just wanted to touch base on, I don't know, I briefly talked about what came in the box, but I just kind of thought it was odd. Maybe I missed something and I didn't find any other documentation in the box. So where you find that at, I don't know, but if I find it, I'll leave it in the description below. And every once in a while, we're getting an E2, an E02 error code on our charge controller. In the manual of that charge controller, an E02 is battery over voltage error. And if we take a look at their service card, on their service card, it says the BMS charge cutoff voltage is 14.6 volts. So something is happening. I have this set at 14.3 volts and it's saying that this should, cut. we just got another E02 error, that this should cut it off at 14.6. So something's happening between this and the charge controller. So what I wanna to try to do is go into the charge controller and we're going to set this at 14.1. We should not have any more problems at this point. If we do, then I'll be sure to uh, cover that. And as I was waiting on the battery to charge, I was reviewing the footage and I found the problem that was happening when the uh, charge controller was shutting off because the battery was shutting it down. It's because the voltage actually spiked to 14.9 and that's a good thing. So that's a real good plus on the battery because it protected it from the over voltage like it said it was going to. So I've been charging the battery for over an hour on 14.1. I've changed it to 14.2 and I charged it another 30 minutes and I've had absolutely no problems. So I would say I feel safe at 14.2, 14.3 max with this charge controller charging this battery. Now we're fully charged. I actually had to put in 1.47 kilowatt hours to get it charged. And before I start loading these appliances up on the inverter, I'm actually going to change this cable out because this runs down and I've got a 200 amp fuse right here. And if I try to overload the inverter, I'm going to blow that fuse. So this is definitely something I do not recommend, but you can see I've got this ran directly to the inverter without any of my protections hooked up because I want to test out that BMS. So I've got some real energy consuming appliances, a heat gun, a toaster oven, an old sandwich maker, and a 12 inch miter saw. This is for my inductive loads. So when I turn on the motor, hopefully it surges. 
And if we look at the service card that come with this, I'm gonna need 450 amps to shut off the BMS. These three appliances are on. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this one in and then that's when it's gonna start consuming uh, some power. And from this point forward, we're gonna pay more attention to the actual shunt. And down here is where our capacity number will come in. We wanna see this total number above 200. And then when we're doing the BMS test, this we wanna see over that 450 amps. So now I wanna turn on the oven. We're gonna open that door so that way at least this tries to stay on longer. We're up to 194 amps just with these two appliances. Next, I'm gonna turn on the heat gun. We are at 270 amps. I'm gonna flip this on high. We're at 292 amps and the inverter is not liking that. Also over here, we're actually above 3000 watts. So really there's only one thing left to do is to turn on the miter saw. The BMS test passed with flying colors because I've seen it surge up to right at 400 amps and it turned it off. Now it's all back on and we're good to go. That is how a battery is supposed to perform. Now I got one more test to do on the load and we're gonna run it around 190 amps for as long as we can because it says continuous at 200 discharge. So we're gonna run around 190. That's as close as I can get it. I wanna be sure that I'm close around that 200 and see if we can discharge this battery over about an hour at 190 amps the entire time. The system just shut down and it was at 150 amp hours uh, as it depleted. Now, I don't think that it's the capacity that shut it down. I think that the BMS shut down because I was running it anywhere from 195, maybe 192 to 205 amp hours the entire time to see if I can deplete the battery fast and if the BMS would handle it. I was a little bit concerned about the going over the 200 and at 205. So if this shut down because it warmed up, and it did in the last five or 10 minutes, it got a little bit warm uh, on the top, even feel the touch on the casing. So how thermal camera will read that is it's reading the surface temperature. It doesn't read the cell temperature that's inside. So this may have shut down simply because of the temperature of the cells. And that would be a good thing because it's protecting the battery. So at this point, I think the capacity test will go on to pass and the BMS just proved itself once more. This battery is doing everything that it's supposed to. And just as I expected, the battery cooled down and it turned back on and we have used 151.8 amp hours. And I'm gonna continue that capacity test, but I'm not gonna use as much amps, you know, while we're pulling that juice out of the battery because I don't want it to overheat again. But this battery is very much impressing me as far as performance wise. It's doing everything that it's supposed to all of the fail safes are, are kicking in when they're supposed to. Even though I don't know how to say the name of the company, I am pretty impressed with the battery so far. If this thing could reach up to 200 amp hours on the capacity, this may be one of the best batteries that I've tested out of these new Chinese brands that are swarming the market. And I can't wait to see if we can reach that 200 amp hours. And to finish off this test, we're just gonna use the heat gun So we have passed the capacity test. We're well over it, but for me, it doesn't matter. As long as we hit 200 amp hours, I'm satisfied. How far can it go? 208 amp hours right now. The battery still has life in it because it's charging that. It just doesn't have enough voltage to run the inverter and we're setting at 208.6.
That's very impressive. Before I get to my final thoughts and my recommendation for this one, I wanna point out there that I didn't find anything on this battery that it had a cold temperature sensor in it. So if that's important to you, you might wanna dive a little bit deeper, but I don't think that it does. I didn't find it in any documentation that I could find on the battery. I think this is a brand new company. They're still building their website. They're building their actual uh, product manual on this. So this is an early release and let me just tell you, this blowed me away as far as performance because I had zero expectations that it was gonna perform and it outperformed in every area that I thought that it was gonna fail in. <laughs> so it actually performed like a very high quality battery. I don't know what the internals look like, but as far as performance, this actually performs. And this is the number one battery out of these Chinese style batteries that I have been reviewing that I would recommend at the current time. Now I have tested other high quality batteries, of course, that uh, would blow this out of the water. But as far as the cost of this battery and what you're getting for the money, this is a definite buy. I mean, if you're wanting to build out a uh, battery bank up to I think 50 kilowatts with this, that is massive and 800 amps. So that, that is uh, pretty impressive. I would recommend it. And if you have any questions or any comments that you think that I missed something or you seen something, maybe I did wrong or whatever, leave it in the comments below. Let me know. I hope to catch you in my next video.